Um, there was a speech I wanted to give just about the, the way in which we in the BBC are seeing change and what we think that means for, for us, but also for, a, uh, for, for the coming generation of journalists. Um, we did a report earlier this year on the future of news, and actually the best way to digest it is really by listening to and watching the, some of the key people that we spoke to. Um, so I've got a short film which I hope will lay out some of their big thoughts on that. And I guess the meat of it would be a, a conversation with you, some uh, observations, uh, discussions, any questions that you have. So I'll start, if I may, um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the speech or the comments that I prepared. Um, and I'll start with a story that um, uh, fascinates me uh, about the way, uh, not that we make the news, but that people receive the news. Um, um, and it's an example of just how news is changing, even at 30,000 feet. So we got a, we got a message um, a little while back now from a major in the US Air Force. And he sent us this message from his cockpit. I listen to the World Service and the Global News podcast wherever I go in the world, from Texas to Morocco to the skies over Baghdad. It has been my lifeline. There have been many quiet nights in my jet when I've turned into the BBC World Service on a spare radio and listened to global news while piloting combat air refueling missions over Iraq. On one occasion, a fighter came to get fuel from my tanker at 24,000 feet over Bakuba. And we could see from the empty weapon rack on his wing that he had dropped a bomb in the hour since his last refueling. The pilot recounted how coalition forces had come under fire from insurgents hiding in a bunker, and the army had called upon him to drop a 500-pound bomb directly on the bunker. Amazingly, I'd already heard about the attack on the World Service, and I was able to tell the pilot exactly how accurate and effective his airstrike had been. It's one example of the way in which people are receiving the news, getting hold of the news in ways that we couldn't have conceived of just a few years ago. But then here's another. You'll be glad to hear back on the ground this time. Every month, a podcast from BBC Radio is downloaded literally thousands of times. And, and, I, and I wish I could take the credit for it, but the program is an old one. It's called Letter from America. And its presenter, Alistair Cook, has been dead for 11 years. Alistair is, of course, fighting off competition from podcasts, from blogs and websites, the full digital panoply of the age. But, of course, journalism can travel around the world these days and back again at the push of a button. Thousands of people still want to hear how the joys of a great tennis game can tell you everything you need to know about an American presidential race. What does that tell us? I think it tells us that good journalism endures, that it's valuable, and that the audience is in charge.